me. Good session, guys. I just want to know what your character's plan is going forward so that I can prep for next session. Player. I think we should explore the dungeon where the monsters were coming from, just to make 100% sure it's safe and see if there's any loot. Me. Gotcha. I'll make sure to prep that dungeon. See you all next week. A full week of prep later. Me. Alright, so you're standing outside the dungeon, the monsters that were ravaging the town dead at your feet. You look down past the threshold, the stone pathway that leads into the black abyss, beckoning you. Player. You know what guys, I think we got all of them. I don't think it's worthwhile to go down there. Let's head back to town, collect our reward, and find a new quest. Me. Wait, you, you said last week that you were going into the dungeon, I spent a lot of time prepping it. Player. Come on man. Don't railroad us. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to the Crow's Perch. Where upon my perch, I cover the latest and greatest RPG horror stories. Before we begin today's video, first, a word from our sponsor, Tales of Dracuva, Adventures in Thistledown. In the land of Dracuva, Experience a world where mighty kingdoms of dwarves once ruled from sprawling hyper-advanced megacities before causing a near-apocalyptic event that tore the world asunder and led to the dwarves' disappearance. You will begin your adventure in Jakuva in the great city of Thistledown, risen from the ashes of the Dwarven Empire. Though, as the city continues to grow, ancient enemies, contending factions, and extraplanar outsiders threaten the denizens of Thistledown, and with it, the future of Dracuva. This adventure book is fully compatible with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and is filled with nearly a dozen adventures set in Dracuva, taking players from level 1 up to level 15. Inside of this adventure book, you'll also find 40 original magic items, over 50 creatures, four original ancestries specific to the setting at large, three new subclasses, one new magical class, and over 30 new spells. Tales of Dracuva Adventures in Thistledown is now live on Kickstarter, so back the Kickstarter now and begin your adventure in the land of Dracuva. Viewers of my channel are also promised to receive a special avian-themed ancestry, with a subrace that may or may not look like a crow. So, that's something to look forward to. Thank you to Tabletop Totality and Tales of Dracuva for sponsoring this video. And now, back to today's stories. Today we have two different stories. The first of which is about an AD&D game, centered around a cleric who doesn't quite seem to understand why AD&D and older editions have quite the reputation for their lethality. While I've never played AD&D myself, I have played a couple of games of Dungeon Crawl Classics and a game of Electric Bastion Lands, both of which are games based in the old school philosophy. Games like these tend to have quick character generation, deadly encounters and traps, and books that are jam-packed with cool-ass art that are almost impossible to read for rules. I'm looking at you, Morkborg. Anyway, I'm not taking Questing Beast's job anytime soon, so without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive right into this story. This one happened to me quite a while ago, but it's been weighing on my mind recently. I was the GM for this one. The party consisted of a barbarian, two unimportant to this story individuals, and a cleric. The latter was relatively new to the party. Seemingly okay guy, but a constant source of complaints. He'd regularly talk smack about the party's performance, despite the party playing quite tactically and well, in my opinion and especially focusing on the Barbarian's conduct as ineffective for, I guess, not just blindly running in and wailing on the enemy every single fight. I wanted to talk to the player about this and to tell him to bring it down, but the other players insisted that his behavior was fine. That's just him joking around and how he always is in these things and that they really didn't mind. So, I let it slide. It was especially weird, since the Barbarian was actually the one who invited him for the game, but sure. Okay. One of the most prominent complaints was the party always making cowardly retreats when faced with deadly foes. 
This being an AD&D game that didn't mess around with lethality, retreat was very much a good idea a lot of the time. But that didn't stop the complaints from coming. And there was more than one incident of the party being forced to stay and take a bad fight due to the cleric's unwillingness to retreat. The party's survival of these situations was usually nothing short of miraculous. This came to a head when, while exploring a dungeon while somewhat low on resources and hit points, the party encountered a Gorgon. The dice go poorly for them, they're turning tail to run, and of course the cleric is refusing to fall back, insisting that they can take it and calling the party a bunch of cowards. Then the cleric gets hit with a breath attack, fails his save, and is immediately petrified. The Barbarian, moral giant that he is, grabs the petrified jackass and starts running. Despite the extra weight, the party manages to disengage, but they're in trouble and need to get out of the dungeon fast. Of course, this is hard when you're lugging a statue with you, and it's not made easier by the petrified player sniping you and calling you bad. The cleric is just not even holding back this time, despite me asking him to turn it down a little. Not shutting up about how the fight could have been won easily if the barbarian, you guessed it, just went in and wailed on the monster. After stoically putting up with this for a good five minutes, the barbarian says, Man, flock this, ditches the petrified cleric into a nearby pit trap and says that it'll be safe there until they come back for it later. The cleric is visibly upset about this, but before he goes off, he notices my getting tired of your shit stare and just goes quiet. About 30 minutes later, after a brief break and refreshing their stuff, the party goes back and retrieves the cleric and starts heading back towards town. As it happens, a temple of the cleric's deity, the goddess of seasons and peace, is nearby. The cleric had been working hard to impress these people, and most of his non-dungeon crawling actions were in some way serving that. So, the party drags the petrified cleric into the altar, get him up on the altar, get him up on the altar, and the head priest whips out stone to flesh. The cleric, upon recovering, says that he immediately jumps up, grabs his weapon, and attempts to murder the barbarian with it. The barbarian who had risked his own life to save the cleric, in front of the clergy, that he was so eager to impress, with one foot still on the altar of the goddess of peace. My reaction at this point was exchanging glances with the other players, who were as speechless as me. At that point, exhausted, I just decided that the goddess turned him into a fern. After a couple of minutes of him calling this whole thing a sham, and some sort of setup to make him look like an idiot and not let him play, I politely ask him to leave. He packs up in a huff, goes out the door, and I have fortunately not seen him since. Until last Saturday, when I bumped into him and his wife at the flea market. We talked for a few minutes. He mentions he basically lost touch with everyone in that game since. He talked with great fondness about our game, not mentioning how his participation had ended. How he's sick of playing 5th edition, and how he wants to play some old school stuff again. He asked me if I was still running AD&D. I am. In fact, still running old school D&D. But I leave it to the readers to conclude how I answered that question. TLDR, player constantly and aggressively complains about party, gets himself petrified through his own poor decision-making, attempts to murder a player character that saved his life, and gets unceremoniously booted. I always love stories where unwarranted PvP is rewarded with divine intervention. Maybe if he spends a few millennia being a fern, this cleric might realize that this barbarian was actually playing incredibly well in a D&D &D and any other old school and old school revival slash renaissance game. You never want to take a fight unless you know you can win it. With the most difficult thing being sometimes you don't know. And in that case, discretion is the better part of valor. That or just swarm the dragon with all of your hirelings. That's what they're there for, right? I'm paying you two copper an hour. You better get in that fight, lantern boy. Wait, he's getting paid? Anyway, 
On to the next story. This next story is... Well, it's one of the truest horror stories of them all. A story about attendance. Stop me if you've heard this before. You mentioned to your friend group and some co-workers about some cool Dungeons & Dragons books you bought the other day. Young, starry-eyed nerds and theater kids that you are, you gather up at a pizza place and talk about all the fun things you want to do. You set up a time, a place. You get everything ready, right until it's time. And then, 30 minutes pass. It's an hour later, two hours. One guy showed up late, another eats all of your pizza, both of them forgot their character sheets, and your best friend of three years completely ghosts you and texts you the day after that they had an emergency appointment for an eye exam that you know for a fact is scheduled for next week because you scheduled it for them. So, without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive right into this story. I got into Dungeons & Dragons this year, and since nobody I knew knew anything about it, I took up the DM mantle. We began in person, and moved to Discord. At first, I bought pizza and stuff a couple times, and said, feel free to reimburse me however much you feel like, or bring something next time. Neither of these things happened, which is fine. I didn't really expect anything else. I knew it would be a challenge to get people to show up on time or at all. So from the very beginning, like session two, rule one on our WhatsApp group and Discord was, be on time. If you can't make it, inform me 24 hours ahead. If you'll be late, inform two hours ahead. I also said this several times during sessions, explaining that playing someone's character requires extra prep and effort, and hinders the fun of the other players somewhat. Only one person, of five, actually respected this. I'm sure she didn't even need the rule, and would have done this anyway, because in my opinion, it's pretty basic human decency. Every single session, we'd have to wait for someone. On a couple of occasions, one player got a text from another, asking him, Who's there, and what's the vibe? After the session had already begun, and not informing anyone of lateness or absence so he could decide whether to come or not. When we moved to Discord, these same two guys would still be playing Fortnite while the session has begun, after showing up late. The final straw was when someone we knew died, and the memorial service was on game day. I didn't know them, or any of their family except one person, so I wasn't going. Of course, I wouldn't expect anyone to skip that for D&D, but nobody said anything, and the service was announced a week before the session. So I thought, they didn't say anything, so I guess they're not going to the memorial? Which I didn't really believe. But benefit of the doubt. Game day comes. A few minutes before the session one, player texts the group, won't make it, at the memorial. A few minutes later, another texts, yeah, I won't make it either. He didn't go to the memorial. He was hungover. I just replied, so no session today. The following day, I texted the group, saying that if this happens again, I'm ending the game. And by this, I mean not informing 24 hours ahead about absence or two hours ahead about lateness. And that I won't give an explanation or warning. I'll just close the group. One of the players replied, well, then you may as well end it, because that's unreasonable, and I'm not going to do that. This was the first time he'd heard of this. He hadn't read the very first rule that I had very specifically and prominently displayed on both our platforms, and reiterated during sessions. And now that he did hear about it, it was too much to ask. This is also the player who said he couldn't commit to more than two sessions per month, or two hours per session. He is unemployed, childless, and spends many more hours a week playing video games and watching series. I wrote the message below, but didn't send it. I just closed the group instead. I would like to let you guys know that I have better things to do than prepare for a game that isn't going to happen. This is not a live event, where if you change your mind at the last minute, it's just one less attendee and ticket sale. There are no tickets. There are no sales. 
you are the show. If two players flake, the game can't happen for the other three unless I pull your weight, which I will no longer do. This is why I've said countless times, if you can't make it, give it at least 24 hours notice. Every two weeks, I think, maybe this time there won't be a flake. And every single time, I'm disappointed. I knew this would happen today because of the memorial, so I wasn't surprised. And I'd have to change my entire outlook on life if I stopped giving you guys the benefit of the doubt. Do me a favor for the first time. Take away the doubt and just say you don't care and the rest of us shouldn't count on you. I've said many times, if this is a chore, burden, or if it starts to feel like you're doing me or anyone else a favor by showing up, then leave. All you have to do is show up for two hours every two weeks, or give prior warning beforehand. It's really not a lot. This game is for people who want to be here, and I know, it's a bad look for me to say this during a memorial for someone we knew, but I've held my tongue for a long time in service of no negative vibes, and for some reason, this is the final straw. You all knew about the memorial since at least Monday, it would have cost you nothing to say the three words, I won't attend, any time between then and yesterday. So, that's it. It's now a few months later, and I still have that message saved on my phone's clipboard. I've kind of broken off contact with some of these guys, whom I considered friends, because I realize they do not respect or care about me in the slightest. Now I'm a little more lonely, yet a little less sad. So, happy ending. Kinda. I'm also running two other games now, and my new players are voluntarily paying me for the sessions here and there. Attendance is still a pain, but at least I don't feel disrespected. There's a lot of effort that goes on behind the screen whenever a GM is working on their game, especially with someone as new as this DM. Look, we're all nerds. And sometimes we get sidetracked and hopped up on energy drinks, and suddenly you're trying to get your next victory royale 30 minutes before your session starts. We got a number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down. 10 kills on the board right now, just wipe out to me. But when it's game time, it's game time. Be respectful, not just for your DM, but also for your players. I get it. Life stuff happens. And if these players weren't just using their friend's memorial service as an excuse to play Fortnite and actually showed up to it, I'd understand, even if they didn't send their DM a message about it. And to any new GMs out there that need to hear it, if your players don't respect you, how the hell are you going to respect them? And what kind of game are you going to get out of it that's worth playing? Anyway, that's it for today's stories, and these are my thoughts. And I'd like to see what you guys have to say about today's stories in the comments down below. Oh, and also we hit 5k before 2022. Got some ideas planned out for a 5k special, and we'll see where it goes. Expect it to be maybe mid-late January, but I guess it's probably going to be a 6k special by then. And before we close out for today's video, how can I forget? Art of the Week. Art of the Week! This week's Art of the Week is by patron Gibber Woods, who sent me a reimagining of the crow as a bard. Greetings, friends. Allow me to regale you with a tale, a tale of cringe and glory. Jacob Crow is back with an RPG horror story. Ooh, allow me to provide musical accompaniment. Well, it's definitely horror themed. I suppose that works. Thank you once again to Gibber Woods for this fantastic piece. If you would like your art to be featured on next week's Art of the Week, Simply post your art in the art channel on the Crow's Perch Discord server. Or you can email it to me in the email in my channel's about section. Or just DM me on Twitter. I'll get to it. At some point. But I will get to it. And once again a special thank you to the Crow's Perch patrons. Beyond the shattered halls that lay before you, a bird who pledged a single dollar. Reuven Gritters, but he was not the first. From beyond them, in this crumbling hall of avian antiquity, there were the Counts of Quills, Gibber Woods, King Drizil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Sawyer Rankin, Kooky Spooks, Rikus, Mexican, Haley Thompson, Zero Feng, 
and Netscape Navigator. But there are thrones far above these in this realm of feathers and despair. Those of the barons of Beaks, Misfit, Wormy, Who Am I Again, Matthew Malquini, Vincent, Den of the Drake, Mick Yeatley, and Anya. But of course, how could I forget? The Dukes of Feathers. Happy Rex, Stevie, Doc Salty 96, General Constantine Chase, and Acroth. Is it weird for me to do a crappy impression of the Ancestor from Darkest Dungeon for my Patreon outro? I just played the second one and wanted to pull my hair out through my eyeballs, so I guess that's for me to decide. Thank you for tuning in to today's stories, and I'll see you next time. As the Crow Flies. <laughs>